Level three, anatomy and physiology mock questions. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching, and in this video, I'm gonna help you explore clear ways that you can use your mock questions to help you prepare for your level three anatomy and physiology exam so you can pass first time with confidence. Now, before we go any further, just to let you know, there is a download alongside this video where you can access 48 mock questions to help you prepare. Now inside that, we're also in today's video going to go through one of those mock questions in detail to help you unpick them. But I'm also going to share with you a three step strategy to help you really make the most of your preparation time before you get to your exam. Now, what we often see as a major problem when people are revising is that training fit pros start using the mock questions as their revision rather than a way of testing their knowledge and their exam readiness. Now, you'll know this is you if you go through and you start at the beginning of the mock questions and you start working your way down through and you're trying to remember the question and the answer and you're using that as a way of learning. And that's what you don't, that's the thing not to do in relation to preparing for your exam because you can guarantee that those exam questions that you have in your mock paper are not the ones you're going to get on exam day. You will have the same type of content, you will have the same syllabus, you'll have the same information, but the exact questions will appear very differently. And that's really important to know that it's actually a very futile effort to be trying to remember every single exam question and every answer. And actually that could go against you on exam day if you've been using this as your method. And the reason why that can go against you is that you end up, if, as you, soon as you see a type of question, you end up jumping to conclusions about the answer and could end up putting the entirely wrong answer. So the strategy we're gonna show with you today has got three steps that will take you away from using mock questions as a way of learning and actually use mock questions as a way of getting prepared following the learning that you've already done. So first of all, I wanna share with you the fact that there are three steps and then we're gonna go through and unpick a mock question. There are three steps to being prepared for your level three anatomy and physiology exam using your mock questions. The first one are the three C's. You gotta be cool, calm and collected. Now this goes not just for exam day, but also when doing your mock questions. It's important that you kind of simulate the same sort of exam environment when you're doing your mock question. So don't have your notes available to you and actually take that moment to say, I'm going to now do this mock exam in exam conditions. And that's, that way you're preparing and testing your ability to do the exam in exam conditions rather than just whether you know the answer or not in a relaxed state. Now, what's important is that you take your time and you set yourself up to be cool, calm and collected. And by that, I mean allowing yourself time to read the questions, allowing yourself time to have a deep breath and actually see what the questions are asking. And I'm going to go through that in a moment when we have a look at a question to unpick. It's really important that you just allow yourself a moment to see what is actually on the paper in front of you as the question rather than the assumption of in your head, whatever it is that you've seen in a previous mock question, starting to uh, falsify what you see and you end up not taking on board the actual facts. So that's the first one. Be cool, calm and collected. Do anything you can to be fully relaxed on exam day, but also when you take your mock question. Make sure you've uh, done everything you can to feel relaxed in the moment. Take a deep breath and then start. The second part of this strategy is to make a quick decision. Now, this is really important because it will save you a lot of time in the long run. Now, by this, I mean that when you get your exam questions, there'll be some that as you read the question, you'll instantly know whether you like it or dislike it. <laughs> and by that, I mean it'll be a content that you feel comfortable with or an exam question that feels familiar, or it'll be something that you don't really like the idea of or it's a little bit more complex. And what I need you to do is make that decision very quickly. So you turn around and make a quick decision and say, yes, I like this, I'm going to tackle it right now. Or no, I'm not going to tackle it now. I'm gonna put a pause on it, I'm gonna flag it. So if you're doing an online exam, you can flag it. If you're doing a written exam, you can literally just put a dot next to it and come back to it later. Now, this is really important because there's something called the sunk cost fallacy. And this sunk cost fallacy basically says if you spend too long doing something, if you put a lot of time and investment into it, you feel like you've got to see it all the way through to the end. You can't stop until it's done. 
And if you spend too long reading a question, let's just say you decide you don't like the question, but you carry on and you read it anyway. You start trying to unpick the answer. You kind of get yourself worked up, anxious, and in a position whereby you're like, I've got to answer it now before I move on. And all, in, all the time in your head, you're kind of getting this ticking clock, knowing that you're potentially wasting time on a question that you find quite tough. So the sunk cost fallacy basically says that you don't want to spend too long deciding whether you're going to answer that question now or later. You want to make that nice and quick so you don't feel like you're invested in that question. So that is step number two. You need to basically make a quick decision as to whether you want to answer that question now or leave it for later. Don't spend too long there. Now, step number three is time frame. Here you need to understand the exact time frame that you have for your real exam. So, for example, if you have 50 questions to complete in 50 minutes, then you know that on average you have one minute to answer each question. So when you do your mock question and you're starting to go through your mock paper, it's very important that you only allow yourself the same equivalent time, so one minute per question. And this means that it's realistic to the stressors you're going to have on exam day. It's realistic to the time frame that you need to work by. And this is also very good and it ties in with step number two, whereby you had to decide quickly whether you want to answer it then or leave it to the end. And this basically means that you're not wasting time on the harder questions, but you can bag all of the easier ones first know that you've bagged that inside the time frame that you do have all while staying cool calm and collected before then going back and answering the tougher ones at the end and that's my biggest tip so those three steps together number one was cool calm and collected number two was about making a decision quickly as to whether you're going to take that answer now or do later and then number three is about making sure you adhere to the time frame of your exam in practice now, as you're using this information, it's going to really help you be able to test the fact that you are ready for your exam. So let's explore one mock question together right now. Now, this mock question says on here, which of the following is the sac that surrounds the heart? Now, this is a typical level three anatomy and physiology mock question. Inside this, I want you to cover up the answers so you can't see the answers and just read that question. So you go, which of the following is the sac that surrounds the heart? Now, remember those steps that we had. First is cool, calm and collected. Take a breath, read the question. Is this something you want to answer now that you like? Or is it something that you would actually rather wait until the end? Remember to do that as part of it. If you've only got a minute to answer the question and you decide to go for it, then let's move on to looking at the answers and unpicking the question. So the question again, which of the following is the sac that surrounds the heart? So you go, okay, it's a sac, it's talking about around, and it's also saying about the heart. So you extract those keywords. Then as you're thinking about what that might be and starting to access the information in your brain, heart, sac, around the heart, what are those keywords? What do they mean to me? What do I know about those keywords? then you can dive into the answers. Now, the possible answers are A, endocardium, B, perimysium, C, pericardium, and D, myocardium. So as you're unpicking, like, oh, I'm not sure what answer it might be, you want to be able to really look at each particular question, each particular sample answer that you have, and be able to understand what each of those terminology relate to. So first of all, you know it's relating to the car to the cardium, so to the heart. So we want to remove B, which would be perimysium, because that's to do with muscles. So we don't need that one. Then we need to know the prefixes of the words. So endo, peri, and myo. Myo means muscle, so it can't be D, which is myocardium, and it leaves us with endocardium and pericardium. Now, peri has the prefix meaning of around, so that already suggests that it's around the heart, pericardium, whereas endocardium means deep inside, which would be a connective tissue or a lining deeper on the innermost edge of the heart. So here we can decipher the fact that C is the correct answer for pericardium. So if, have a go at that question. And also there are multiple mock questions for you to download alongside this video. And as you do that, what I'd like you to do is to just like we did there, we took our time, we were cool, calm and collected. We also allowed ourselves to be able to decide, do we want to answer that question right now or do we want to leave it to later? 
And then when we do decide to do it, make sure it fits within the time frame that we have available to us. So they are my three top tips for you to get you ready for your exam via three very clear steps and strategies. What I'd love to hear from you is what your big takeaway has been from today's video. All you need to do is drop a comment underneath the video and let me know what you've learned today. And also remember to go and download the 48 mock questions that will help you prepare for your level three anatomy and physiology exam. Thank you so much for joining me and all the best for your exam. Take care.